the channel. Today we're talking about intro to 3D vectors. Now we mastered 2D vectors. We're like level three experts at that. It's time to move on to 3D. Now, the whole goal about the next couple of videos, what I'm gonna be talking about, the whole point of it, okay? Don't be scared of 3D because the whole point is just to take a 3D vector, such as this vector here, okay? So there's some vector that goes from the origin to that opposite corner of that cube. Take that 3D vector, and we'll call him vector F, and break him into components, I hat, J hat, K hat. Because if I can take a 3D vector and break it into I, J, and K, then I can add up a hundred of them, right? Add all the I's together, add all the J's together, all the K's together. So everything I'm gonna be doing in the next couple videos is showing you how to take a 3D vector and make it into I hat, J hat, K hat. That's it, okay? So don't think, oh, this is gonna be hard. It's, it's not hard, okay? There are three ways, okay? that a vector can be expressed in 3D, three ways. And this, that I'm gonna to talk to you on this video, is about way number one, okay, number one. And I call this the blue triangle, triang triangle. Sorry, my speller quit working there in my brain. Equations, okay? The blue triangle equations. Now the reason I call it the blue triangle equations is because in the book, these problems, I'm looking for my book. So in the book, these problems always have, or they're expressed with these little blue triangles, okay? So this particular method, I just call it the blue triangle equations. You won't find that in the book. I just, I made that up, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to derive those, how to use them, and you're gonna be like, man, that was so easy, okay? One of the things that I wanna do is, I wanna tell you that a 3D vector, just like a 2D vector, has projections onto the axes, okay? So this vector F would have three components. Instead of two in 2D, it has three in 3D. It has this guy, okay? That's Fx has this guy, that's Fy, and of course it has this guy, and that's Fz, okay? So that 3D vector has three components, and the same as it was in 2D, if I take, if I wanna know the magnitude of vector F, well, it's the square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus fz squared, okay? So if I magnitude in 3D the exact same way we do in 2D, so that's easy to do, okay? Now one of the things I want to kind of tell you about is this. I want to imagine that vector f is contained inside of a plane, and that plane is right here and right here, okay? So kind of this, this plane here, okay? Imagine that plane as a door, okay? And that door used to be over here on the x-axis and it's going and it's opened up. How much is it opened up? It's opened up this much, okay? And we call this angle phi, okay? Angle phi, now let me write it over here, phi, Okay, I call angle phi the swing angle, because imagine that as a door, and it's hinged, like here's the hinges, right? There's a hinge here, and there's a hinge here, right? It's hinged on the z-axis, and it's allowed to swing, and it can swing that way, or it can swing this way, it doesn't matter. But that, I call it the swing angle. And again, don't go looking for that in the book, because I just made it up, okay? And angle phi is the angle between the positive x-axis and the bottom of, I'm gonna call it the door. It's not really the door, but it's the plane. So, and the bottom of the plane, let's call it FH for hypotenuse, right? This is F, 
H also, right? That's the hypotenuse of the door, okay? So that's one angle. I need one more angle because in 3D, in 2D, I could give you a vector and just say, hey, a vector's at 30 degrees. And you go, okay, boom, there's zero. And then, well, there's 30 degrees. There's my vector, right? But in 3D, I got to tell you a little more. I got to tell you like what the inclination is. And then I got to tell you like which way it is this way, right? So phi is the one that tells me where it is this way. Now I need one that tells me this way, right? And we call this guy, we call this guy theta z, okay? So that's the second angle. So theta z is the angle between positive z and vector f, okay? So positive z, straight up, down, okay? So here's, here's theta z is from positive z down to the vector, okay? Now this is the least amount of information that you can possibly have in order to describe a 3D vector would be the magnitude, so I need to know how big it is, that would be just f, and then those two angles, I need to know phi and theta z. Once I know that, I know the i hat, the j hat, and the k hat every time, okay? So we're going to use something called Sokoto. Have you ever heard of it? We're going to use a little simple trig, and we're going to derive some equations. And the goal here is to take that 3D vector and break him into three parts. Fx, Fy, and Fz, right? I hat, J hat, K hat. If I can break it into three components like that, dude, I can write it in our Cartesian form, and I can add 50 of them together. No problemo, okay? So step one, let's get in a helicopter, okay? And we're going up here, and we're going to hover straight above this, and we're going to look straight down on that system. So what would you see if you looked straight down on that system? Well, you would see this, okay? Here's that y-axis, here's the x-axis, and here is something, okay? And here is that angle phi right there, okay? So... Question, and, and this is, uh, this will be Fx, and this will be Fy, okay? Because if this is Fx, right, so is that over there. If this is Fy, then so is that over there, right? Now, what am I looking at right here? What is that? Now, I'm in a helicopter looking straight down on it, right? Johnny Weeksauce, he would say, oh, that's vector F. Nuh-uh. If you were looking straight down on that door, what would you see? You'd just see the top of the door, wouldn't you? Okay, that's actually FH, okay? So, let's do sine and cosine for this triangle right here, okay? This is FX over here as well, okay? So here we go, cosine. Cosine of phi is equal to opposite, no. No, that's sine. Adjacent over hypotenuse, FX over FH. So we can rearrange that, and we can say that fx is equal to fh cosine of phi, all right? Same equation, let's do sine, okay? So sine of phi. And sine is opposite, boom, over hypotenuse. So fy over fh. So let's see, fy, we can rearrange this again. fy is equal to... Uh, FH sine of phi, okay? So there's two little nifty equations for FX and FY, all right? Let's do one more thing. Let's look at this door, the plane that contains vector F, okay? Look at the door, but let's look at it straight on. So we're looking straight at the door, okay? What would we see? Here's the door. Oh, that's not a very straight line, Dr. Hansen. Okay, I'll fix it. Okay. There's the door, okay? Here's vector F right here. Goes from one corner. Golly, man, I'm like king of the crooked lines today, aren't I? Okay. That's pretty straight. There's vector F, okay? Uh, the top of the door is FH. The bottom of the door is FH. And this is FZ. And this is Fz, and here's theta z, okay? I want to do the exact thing I did over there, little Sokotoa, to this triangle right here one more time. 
And what am I going to get? Okay, for this triangle, I get this. Cosine of theta z is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so fz over f. Okay, and again, I can rearrange that, and I get this. fz is equal to f cos theta z, okay? And let's do sine. Sine of theta z is equal to, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so fh over f. And one more time, I can rearrange this guy, and I get fh is equal to f sine theta z. Okay, so I have two more equations there and there. Now the overall goal here was to be able to write an fx, an fy, and an fz, because if I can get an i, j, and k, man, I can go to town, yo. Okay, so, hmm, you know what I'm not in love with? I'm not in love with fh. I just want x, y, and z. I don't need fh in my life, do I? Okay, so, hmm, if I only had an equation for fh... That way I could substitute in. Oh my goodness, there's one right there. So let's substitute that in for there, okay? So fx is equal to fh, which is f sine theta z. Okay? And then cosine of phi. Okay? And then fy, well, he has an fh, so I'm going to substitute again. And then sine of phi. And then fz. You know what? Fz is okay. He doesn't have any weird stuff in him. So he's just f cos theta z. Okay? Boom. We just did it, y'all. We just did it. Now that wasn't really hard because all we used was Sokotoa. But you should put a star by that. Okay? Those are the blue triangle equations. Okay? Those are the blue triangle equations. Those are the ones that you should remember, and uh, helpful on the test to remember that, okay? These are the blue triangle equations, all right? So what do you need to use the blue triangle equations? What do you need? Well, you need to look at one of those blue triangle problems, and you need to identify three things. Number one, what is F? which is generally given, they'll tell you, hey, the magnitude of this vector is 300 newtons, or something like that, right? That's pretty much given. What is phi? Okay, well, you, all you have to do is remember, uh, what was phi? Oh, yeah, it's the swing angle. It's the angle between the positive x-axis and the bottom of the door. And if you can find that angle, dude, all you got to do is plug it into these equations. So phi equals what? And then finally, what does theta z equal, right? So if I, and, and there it is, from positive z down to the vector. So if I can identify those three things, I can plug them into those three equations and then just solve them. I just turn the crank in my calculator, right, and I'm done. And here's the deal that was nice about these equations, okay? Number one, they just came from Sokotoa. Number two is if you put the right thing in these equations, it will give you the right sign out, okay? Because you can look at a vector, like this vector here, I can see has a positive x, a positive y, and a positive z. So when I put my stuff in these equations, I better get a positive, a positive, and a positive. If I don't, if the calculator gives me a negative for one of these, then I did something wrong. Now here's the other thing. On the other hand, if you put garbage in for these variables, right, if you put garbage into those equations, guess what you're going to get out? Garbage. Okay. So that's how, that's where they come from. The, the main thing is I want you to do, be able to do is identify what is phi, what is theta z, okay? In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a whole bunch of those up here on the board, and I'm going to drill you over it, okay? I'm going to ask you over and over, what's phi, what's theta z? And you're going to push pause, and you're going to tell me, okay? So I'm going to drill you on this, because once you can start identifying what is phi and what is theta z, how easy is this? Just plug it in and... Put your calculator done, right? Easy. I hat, J hat, K hat, okay? So get ready for some exercise. I'm fixing to drill you on some, uh, on some problems. Hang on.